Welcome back to another episode of Grizzly True Crime. My name is Gisela Kay, and today we continue to look at the quadruple homicide that took place in Moscow, Idaho, where four students were murdered in their off-campus college home, and two were unharmed. So there were six people in the house at the time. There were five roommates and then one boyfriend of one of the roommates that stayed there. And Ethan and Zayna were murdered and Maddie and Kaylee were also murdered. There will be a candlelight vigil on November 30th around 5 p.m. It will be live streamed, so I think you could see that on the University of Idaho page. I won't be streaming that. I think it's very personal, and I cannot imagine what the families are going through. But I will link the channel for you in the pinned comments in case you do want to watch that. Before I get into the updates that I want to share with you today, I want to show you this. We mentioned this about three or four days ago with this rumored Venmo. Yes, I know, it's another case with another strange Venmo payment. Maybe it means nothing. But I'm just going to show it to you anyway, because now it's been covered by News Nation, by Ashley Banfield, and people are starting to take this Venmo payment a lot more seriously. So let's see what they say. Uh, they say here, did some digging on Venmo, and Ethan's last Venmo payment was to Jack Katowicz. That's Jack number two in the slide that I made for you that we've looked at many times. So please check out the playlist that I made for you on this case and then clicked on his page and found a Molly Gray who paid Liz Katowicz, Jack's sister, and captioned it 3.30 a.m. This is very unsettling. Could be nothing, but could be something. Thought it was interesting regardless. I think in this case, the digital footprint of everyone is gonna have the most clues, including, of course, the killer. I think that that's why the FBI is also involved because they're going to be digging through so many social media profiles and connections and anyone who may have been connected to the Wi-Fi hotspot in the house or anything like that. So here you could see a screenshot of that payment. Molly Gray paid Liz Katowicz 3.30 a.m. And that was on November 12th, 2022 at 3.45 p.m. Now, I don't know if you remember this. We looked at the layout of the house on two live streams at length once using the magic pen tool that I have, and the next time we looked at these neon arrows. What we were speculating was that the killer would have more than likely gone through the sliding door, and if you follow the green arrows, gone upstairs, where we were speculating that Maddie and Kaylee would have been staying. And then, coming back downstairs and heading to bedroom number four, where Ethan and Zayna were. They could have been in bedroom four or three, but the most likely would have been bedroom number four, especially based on the evidence that seems to be on the outside of the building running down the walls. That is yet to be confirmed if that is waterproof sealant, rust or blood, we just don't know. But the killer could have, of course, also come in through the sliding door and then first gone to bedroom number four, where Zayna and Ethan were, and then gone upstairs to Maddie and Kaylee's rooms. In my personal opinion, I do think that this killer knew the layout of the house really well and could have been watching from that embankment at the back side of the house and seen maybe even that there was a male in the house that night. Ethan didn't always sleep over there. He lived at a fraternity just, I think they said 300 feet away or something. Really close, walking distance. I mean, campus is also walking distance. But that night he was staying over. So maybe the killer had fantasized about this for so long. I would suspect that this is a fantasy kill. That they were looking through those windows possibly for weeks on end. Maybe every Saturday night for months. We just don't know. But I would speculate it would be someone like a voyeur or a stalker or something like that. But then thinking to him or herself, I'm going to go in and make sure that I take care of that male first. So one could suspect then that they would have gone through the sliding door and first turned left towards bedroom number four and attacked Ethan first and then Zayna because Zayna had defensive wounds. So by attacking one person, there's a little bit of course of a delay in then attacking the other and it would wake the other person up, which explains why then she would have defensive wounds. Then the killer would have made their way up the stairs and gone upstairs to attack whichever person next 
and then I think their target would be the last person that they would attack. In the most twisted way possible, they would have saved the best for last. Because killers like this see their victims as objects and nothing more. They will not have remorse, this will not eat them up inside, this is something that they probably fantasized about for a really long time. Of course, I know there's still a lot of speculation about Murphy the Labradoodle. My speculation would be that Murphy may have run out the sliding door and gone outside for a little bit while the killer was inside, which is maybe why there was no barking. We don't know that there was no barking, but maybe that's also why the roommates downstairs didn't wake up. If there was a dog barking nonstop, they might have been unsettled. So, I mean, we also don't know if this killer, which has happened before, would have brought along, for example, a steak with some sort of tranquilizer in it and given it to Murphy, like chucked it outside and then he could run outside and eat the steak and actually sleep for a little bit after that and then wake up the next day. That's also a possibility, which again means that the person had watched the house for quite some time or was known to the victims. So in making all of this for you guys, the reason we did it was to try to understand how and why the killer avoided even going downstairs to that ground floor area. And it would be easy to avoid with this little red cross here. They didn't go down those stairs if they just moved through the house like they did with these arrows, right? Thank goodness they didn't because as I say, thank goodness two lives were spared. This is an extremely brutal, tragic case already. Can you imagine if all six students and maybe if anyone was staying over with the other two roommates, imagine if all of them were murdered. So it would make sense to me that their target would have most likely been Maddie or Kaylee, who were living upstairs. So if we just look at this picture again that was shared by Fox News a few days ago, you can see that standing in that wooded area, which is also where they expanded the crime scene to, because that's going to be interesting too. What if they find cigarette butts from someone, for example, standing there for weeks watching, or shoe prints, or any kind of DNA, or something like that, as they stood there and watched. And as you stand at the back of the house, you could literally look into all four windows on those two middle floors. You don't even have to pay attention to the bottom floor at all, which is again why I speculate it's a fantasy kill, and fantasy killers want the event to be just right. They want it to be perfect. As we know, Ted Bundy also had those fantasies and he kept on killing and killing, which is why this killer is also high risk for striking again. Because rarely, as we saw with all serial killers, Gacy, Bundy, Dahmer, uh, BTK, Gary Ridgway, Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker, all of them, after being studied or interviewed or assessed, would say that they kept killing because the reality just didn't meet the fantasy. I would think that this person may have even waited for just the right students to live in the house. Maybe they had a fantasy of two hot blondes living upstairs. We don't know, but this is very plausible. The killer could have also been inspired either by other killers like Danny Rowling, the Gainesville Ripper, or Ted Bundy, the campus killer, or by movies like Scream, like a 2019 movie called Black Christmas, things like that. So if we look at this latest Daily Mail article, they say exclusive retracing the murderous steps. Blueprints show where each Idaho student was found stabbed to death in the off-campus three-story house with the slayings taking place on the top two floors while surviving roommates slept downstairs. Dailymail.com can reveal where each of the four murdered University of Idaho students were found stabbed to death in the off-campus rental house on November 13th. Blueprints and layout plans of the Moscow, Idaho home obtained by DailyMail.com reveal the three-story property has two bedrooms on each floor with the killings taking place on the top two floors. Kaylee, Gonsalves and Madison Mogan, both 21, were found dead in their beds on the third floor, while young college couple Ethan Chapin and Zaina Kernodal, both 20, were found in the front second floor bedroom. Surviving roommates, sophomores Dylan Mortison and Bethany Funk slept in the first floor bedrooms, which suggests the killer entered through a sliding glass door that leads from an outdoor patio to the kitchen. The floor plan shows that the murderer could have gone through the kitchen, the foyer, and then the living room, as we saw. 
So they say floor plans of the off-campus house where four Idaho college students were brutally stabbed to death show where each of the six friends was sleeping when the slayings took place. Records of the schematics of the property at 1122 King Road in Moscow, Idaho, obtained by DailyMail.com, show the layout of the building and each bedroom where the four victims were found brutally stabbed to death in their sleep on November 13th. The three-story home has two bedrooms on each floor. Kaylee Consalves, 21, and Madison Mogan, 21, were found on the top floor, which is what we speculated, right? It made the most sense. Knife to death in their beds. The young college lovers, Ethan Chapin, 20, and Zaina Kernodal, 20, were found in the front second floor bedroom. The surviving roommates, sophomores Dylan Mortison and Bethany Funk, who were home at the time of the slaying, slept on the first floor. This floor sits below grade and opens onto a gravel parking lot in the front of the building. Hapless cops remain baffled and have appealed to the public and the media for help in solving the brutal murders. With experts warning the blood-soaked crime scene represents a major challenge hunting for the killer's DNA. So now, if we look at the blueprint of the house, you can see here it says second floor and these are the same as the drawings we looked at before with the layout, right? It's just the other way around because you can see the living areas up here. And then it says one and two, which would be Zayna and Ethan, victim one and two over there in bedroom number four. So if you look here, I hope you can see the mouse cursor. The killer would move through the sliding door and then into the kitchen and then go this way through the living area, turn left to where Zayna and Ethan were asleep. Then go up the stairs to master bed three and bedroom number two upstairs. So let's have a look at that. Here they say one and two, Ethan and Zena, three, Kaylee, and four, Madison. So still most likely Madison was the target. That is also who was Googled 10 times on November 7th. So here is a closer look of the drawing Here's also little scribbles by it, the size of the sliding glass door. They talk about a casement here, and then let's say going here through the kitchen, right, to the foyer, and then into the bedroom here, and then going upstairs. And here it shows master bed and bedroom two. Here is a deck off the bedroom, and there's also a door there. There's three entrance points to this house, but one of them is on the top floor. So that would be really hard to reach unless one had to use a ladder. And yes, there was a ladder propped on the side of the house. Not sure if the killer could have made it up there, but you never know. It just makes more sense that they went in through the sliding door and then first to bedroom number four and then went upstairs. At a press conference on Wednesday afternoon, police refused to say in which order they believed the murders were committed. Because the two women who slept on the first floor were untouched by the killer, it is believed that the assailant went in through the sliding glass door that leads from an outdoor patio to the kitchen on the second floor. The floor layout shows that the murderer would have taken a winding route through the kitchen, the foyer, and into the living room. From there, the killer could have climbed the steps to the top floor and attacked Gonsalves in the front bedroom and Mogan in the back, or walked through the laundry room which leads to the room where Chapin and Kernodal slept, the building schematic shows. Police revealed on Monday that a dog that Gonsalves shared with her on-again, off-again boyfriend, Jack DeCour, was in the house at the time of the attack. A TikTok video of Kaylee dancing with a curly-haired pooch called Murphy shows her in the top floor bedroom with balcony where the attack occurred. So the police do say that the dog was in the home at the time when they came to the home, whether the dog was inside the home at the time or just, you know, in the, in the yard at the time of these attacks, we don't know that. There have been no reports of the dog confronting the killer or being injured during the murders. Police reported that two of the victims likely fought back and suffered defensive wounds trying to ward off the slasher. And that's what I mean. Do you know how many slasher films there are? And how inspired a killer like this could become from those. I'm not blaming the movies. I'm not saying that anyone watching slasher movies. I like watching slasher movies. I love the Scream franchise as well. But you just don't know if someone's mental health is severely compromised. And then they have a fantasy to kill people in this way. What all they could be inspired by before they even commit this crime. Here you can see the red evidence tape on the sliding door as well so that police know that it's sealed and if it gets opened or anything like that then someone tampered with it. We've looked at pictures of the inside of the house before but in case you missed that yes you can see this would be the sliding door 
going into the kitchen, and then we've looked at the movements uh, throughout the rest of the house. One of the realtors of this home said that oftentimes when she came to the home just to inspect something or, you know, check on something, the students wouldn't hear her. They'd be upstairs studying with their earphones on and she would just go through the sliding door. So the sliding door was most likely, even if it was um, slid closed, it was probably not locked. And even if it was, it's actually really easy to uh, open sliding doors. Here you can see a picture. It's from TikTok. Uh, the TikTok accounts are available if you do want to see that. Um, of Maddie on the couch with Murphy the dog. Family members and volunteers have been going around uh, all the houses around that house to and the campus, of course, to give out these flyers asking people to review any security camera or video doorbell footage for any out of the ordinary activity between the hours of 5 p.m. on Saturday, November 12th and 12 p.m. on Sunday, November 13th. Of course, police are asking for video footage specifically for November 13th between 3 and 6 a.m. They also say things you can do to help is explore all areas outside of your residence for anything suspicious, including but not limited to sheds, shops, garbage, recycling, compost bins, bushes, and other various landscaping. Now we get to some of the new information. The house is close to the University of Idaho campus. When it was last up for rent, it was described as one of the top campus housing options available. Sought after location within close walking or biking, driving distance to campus and Greek Row. The agent added ideal setup for roommates with two beds, one bath on each level. The ad also said, sorry, no pets allowed. So I'm guessing Murphy wasn't really allowed to be there. New details have now emerged about Gonsalves and Mogan's last night from Joe Vido, a local man who saw the two co-eds out on the town in the hours before the attack. We know him as Tan Hat Guy from the food truck video. Police had previously said that the women were partying at the corner club bar the night before the attack. Vito was also there and said the women were catching the attention of many of the men at the bar. A lot of guys were talking to them at the corner club, he told DailyMail.com, adding that Consolves was visibly drunk. The taller girl with a pink on, she was glass-eyed. I audibly said, Ew, out loud. She was just stumbling through. He said he left the corner club ahead of the girls and was with a neighbor who had just moved to Moscow, showing her the grub bus, a food truck popular with students with late night munchies. So that would be the girl in the white parka. Remember we saw the long haired guy, the tan hat guy, and then a girl with him? So it would be, I would assume, the neighbor who just moved to Moscow would be that girl. I was just there waiting because the grub bus takes forever with a bunch of drunk zombies showing up there, he said, noting that he was 100% sober. It sounds to me like it could be someone that has recovered from alcohol abuse because they were 100% sober and they said, ew, about the drunk girls. That's when the woman showed up with a guy in a hoodie who has been the subject of much speculation among internet sleuths as a suspect. Police have not named the man, but said that he is not considered a suspect. We know him as Jack number three. <laughs> so if you haven't seen those slides, Jack number three, white hoodie guy, neighbor, hunter, has a K-bar knife, all that. And was allegedly recently kicked out of the fraternity and was apparently at the corner club that night and then was also kicked out of that. So... But police say they do not believe that he's involved in this crime. Now, Joe, the tan hat guy, says, I saw the hoodie guy show up with the two of them. The vibe I got from him is that he's super nice. He was trying to help them get home safe, Vito said. Vito defended the man as a dutiful chaperone who may have had amorous intentions on his mind. He was funny. He was nice. He was there to make sure that they got home safe because they were super drunk. I thought he was a solid guy. Believe me when I tell you that his vibe was not bad. While they were waiting, a bunch of fraternity guys showed up. I was making fun of one of the guys who showed up at the grub bus in short shorts and a tank top, and it was cold, Vito said. I said, relax, bro. Some of us are single. That made everybody laugh, and then he made a joke. We know him as Johnny Bravo. He said people were just talking and chatting, waiting for their food orders. Kaylee and Madison were hanging around the truck window, hounding people who were picking up their orders. He said it was then that a dark four-door sedan showed up. Of course, the private driver of this vehicle is not believed to be involved in this crime. A guy got out and yelled, hurry up, Vito said. I saw them get into the car and it looked like they just ditched him. I said, bro, they're leaving. He said, what the F? And I said, sorry, brother, 
The grub bus cashier had mercy on the two women and handed them food, and they took it and ran to the car. I said to the guy, did you just give those girls food without them paying? He was like, yeah, they had to go home. That's new and interesting. The day after the news of the murders broke, Vito realized that he had some information that police could use in the investigation, so he reached out to authorities. The only thing that I was able to verify is the timeline and tell police that they got in the car, he said. The driver of the car has also been eliminated as a suspect by police. Vito said that the case really hit home with him. I was there, and I have a little girl, and at the end of the day, a dad's going to go through Thanksgiving without a daughter, and that really hurts, he said. Again, I find that interesting because he doesn't talk about someone going through Thanksgiving without a son. Do you see what I'm saying? They're not like, these families have lost their children. Families are going to go through Thanksgiving without their son or daughter. He's only talking about the girls. And obviously that would be because he only saw Kaylee and Maddie. I'm just saying, to me, it's a little bit interesting. This person says on Facebook, it's literally the neighbor and it's so obvious, especially after his interview Monday. He's the stalker, hunter, longtime resident, and maybe even Hoodie Boy. Now, he's not Hoodie Boy because we know who Hoodie Boy is. Hoodie Boy is Jack S. Jack number three. He said he didn't see or hear anything because he went to sleep 2 a.m. that night and had work 11.45 a.m. that morning. If you haven't seen that interview with the neighbors, I'm going to link that in the pinned comments for you as well with a timestamp to right over here. What I wanted to show you here from the city of Moscow Police Department was this update where they say at this time in the investigation. So at this time, it wasn't before because they never said this before. Detectives do not believe the mail that Kaylee and Madison attempted to contact numerous times on November 13th is involved in this crime. So it seems like Jack, number one, Jack D, ex-boyfriend, has been cleared. We have to be careful by saying cleared because, of course, this is an ongoing investigation and no one is cleared until the investigation is over, but they do not believe that he is involved in this crime. Now, there is another possibility that I've seen speculated on a Facebook group discussing this case, which I think is run by Annie Elise from 10 to Life. Uh, so if you're not part of that group on Facebook, go and check it out. But this person speculated in the group that what if the killer used the ladder and actually entered the home through that little, you see that little ledge and through one of the windows. In my mind, that is very much a possibility as well. So if they didn't go through the sliding door and, and they entered through this way, then technically they would have entered, let's say, let's say through the window to bedroom number four immediately, quietly, but they could have gone in through that window, attacked Zena and Ethan, and then gone upstairs to their target or targets. I still speculate that because the police say this is a targeted attack, that Maddie is the target. Because Ethan wasn't ordinarily there. He was just sleeping over there that night. And Kaylee was also not actually supposed to be there. She was at home for, I think it was like a week and a half or so. And then she decided spontaneously that she was going to come through and show Maddie her vehicle, her new Range Rover, which she only had for one day. Of course, I could be wrong. I'm just speculating what I think could have happened. Okay, now I'm going to leave you with that food truck video. I'm going to focus only on one frame because, of course, the video is split in four. So you can see two views from inside the truck and then two views from outside. So I'm going to focus on the one where you can see the most just so that you have it here on record without any interruptions or anything. Of course, this video could mean absolutely nothing, as we've said so many times. But knowing now what we know about Tan Hat Guy also being at the corner club, saying ew to the drunk girls, and then chatting it up with White Hoodie Guy, and then seeing the girls leaving in a dark sedan, and saying, well, the Hoodie Guy was just trying to help them get home safely and all that, I don't know. I just felt like let's have it here with all that information and hoping that more information uh, will be released, like videos from the Corner Club, videos from the Sigma Chi party that Ethan and Zayna attended. I'm sure as the days and weeks go along, because this will require a lot of patience, I think, in this case to solve this case and catch this killer. I'm sure that lots of information is still going to come out as we go on and help us all understand 
what type of killer this really is. We've already done a few episodes where we speculated the type of profile that this killer would have, also based on what professional criminal profilers have said. There's multiple criminal profilers who've spoken up about this case and shared their opinion on it. Most of them are quite in line with each other, which is why it was interesting to look at. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you haven't yet checked out my playlist on this case, please check it out because I'm still getting emails from things that we've already discussed days ago. So binge watch the playlist if you want to catch up on all the details and make sure that we're all on the same page when there's more updates as well. And of course, I'll keep you posted on many of the cases we are concurrently covering as well as new cases that I plan to cover too. So if you like my coverage of true crime, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell, then you'll know when I'm next uploading or going live or anything like that. Check the community tab and also I'm looking forward to read your comments below. Thank you so much. Stay safe and I'll see you soon. Bye. Hello. Hi. Welcome back. Yes, I think I would like the, um, the car. No, no, no. Okay. You up on Yeah, they both. Oh, I feel a mask. But if I have like a free grub truck on my like app. Oh, yep. Uh, so what you want to do is we'll actually uh, do this. I'm about to make you show. I'm going to show you your work in the gym because you're still light. Cool. You Thank you. Absolutely. How many more do you need? Uh, That's the second one? Awesome. Don's mom. Oh, wait. Yeah, one more. One more. Maybe I here. didn't have a suit. I don't know. It's right here. Um, and then what was the Mac? Uh, don't forget to move the spoon. The carbonara. The carbonara. Mac of the week. Here, I'll grab it for Excellent. you. Excellent. And then click see rewards. Enjoy. And it looks like you do not quite have enough points yet. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Um, $10. Perfect. Oh, okay. I do have a big burrito pork here for you. Cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. Where'd the pen go, guys? Where's my pen? How are you guys doing? How are you? I'm doing fantastic. I seem to have lost my pen, but that's fine. Uh, what can I get for you? Can I get Just two Dunk Rums? Yeah. Definitely. I get uh, thank you, thank you. and uh, pork tacos. Oh, yeah. Uh, how many pork tacos would you like? Well, you know what? Just, it just comes with one. Uh, it's one, but they're like six to seven ounce tacos. They're not They're not like small little street tacos. I normally eat two, three is a lot for me. So one would be fine if I was getting pasta or yeah. packages too. Yeah, that's going to be... I Almost get, two pounds I, of food. I better, I better get two. Okay, you got it. I got two pork tacos? Yes, right. Done. <laughs> uh, one five cheese, one basil festo, two pork tacos, twenty four fifty for you. Thank you. Two Don Toms. Seventy nine. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna do this. Hold on. If we decide, yeah. to, since we listed Oh, people, people have fallen. People have fallen over reduce for you. Sorry, I'm talking to Twitch stream. Oh, you're so thank good. You. Absolutely, thank you. How are you doing? Pretty good about yourself. I'm doing extremely well. What sounds good? Uh, can I get a big burrito? Yeah. Uh, for the big burrito, would you like pork or chicken? Chicken. Got it. And then you said a Mountain Dew? Yes, please. Excellent. <laughs> Uh, big Rio chicken and a Mountain Dew. We're gonna do eleven dollars. Here's Mountain Dew and order eighty. Thank you very much. Hello. Hello. I need two chicken burritos with extra slaw. Two chicken burritos with extra slaw. Uh, nineteen dollars for you. I know I have a six dollars waiting for me with like Tina's okay. check. Awesome. Thank so, you. What's the reward? Ha 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 ha! Oh fuck! I just hit your jacket. Sorry, man. Fuck okay. yeah! Thirteen dollars. Hell yeah! Worth it. Oh, always. Um. <laughs> 
Oh, or A1. Thank you. Thank you. Extra slot? Is that a charge? No, it's not a charge. It's just a modifier. Hello. What? They have Apple Pay. How's we have going? Apple Pay, right? Of course we do. Of course you have oh. Apple Pay. Yes. Hi, camera. I'll okay. Chicken taco. Please. Chicken taco. You got it. I'll do the five cheese mac and cheese, please. Okay. okay. I know you're out. Go. Please. Please. No, I'm getting yours no matter what. Like, meat, please. He's waiting. Uh, we'll do two five cheese mac and cheese. Like, I'm adding two or you're making it, it's now two? Oh, two. You're adding two. Excellent. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Anything else? Oh, uh, you got it. So I have a chicken taco and three five cheese mac and cheeses. Okay. Uh, twenty-seven seventy-five. Hey. Hey. How many apples in the mac of the week? Zero, TJ. Zero. Uh, order eighty-two. Thank you. Can I get? Can I get? We already got a five cheese mac and cheese. Okay. Wait, you got one? Oh, my God. Can I get a mac and fire? You got it, man. Uh, one mac and fire, nine bucks for you. Perfect, thank you. Absolutely. Yes, it's going. Okay. Tough, tough, tough. Of course, awesome. you have a layer. Just your burrito forks right here. Order 83. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and then it's all on you. Uh, I was letting go. Time to start warm the old car. It's been a while since this engine started. Let's see if it starts. V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V V First time I used, uh, well, NFC, I don't have an Apple device, so it wasn't Apple oh. Pay. But I was desperate. For donuts? For donuts, yes. I uh, never used, like, a phone NFC Pay. I guess unless you count the, uh, the tap on the car. Wait, say that again? Never used my phone. So I had like a store. Oh, really? I always had my cards. Okay. It's because you're too prepared, Derek. Uh, it's because I try not to forget my wallet. It's a good reason. That's smart, Derek. It's wallet. probably good to not lose your wallet. Guys! Yeah, great ticket times. Honestly. Like, Luke, Tebow, really solid. Love it. Very so, how right, close are we to in. you sitting down on night, Friday nights? I mean, that was a solid rush. It's a good thing that it ended, but this is two. This is a uh, Friday and Saturday in a row. They got you down around one, so I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot, guys. I guess he's gonna need extra slot a second. This bad boy. Tebow's thinking to himself. If I start slowing down on Mag, maybe I'll get to sit down. He's going to try to sabotage me. I actually am try it was, one was wondering if I was going to slow and you are going to switch me back. And I was really scared of that. Actually, that's what I was scared of. Nope. Yes, let that fear You guys know. You guys, like, the highest time I saw was 13 minutes, which is, I'm very satisfied. You guys have worked on the truck, and Derek and I have been the ones on Grill and Mac, and we've had longer ticket times than that. Like, you're doing well. Really? Okay, 
dude. Hell yeah. Alright, what did I miss? Uh, reduce reuse. Lol. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. that gets them on there. And then, like, they want their numbers to be called really? okay. uh, uh, Are you knowing who else is that? Are super popular? No. The Tomahawks, what's the side for? Hello! Hi. How are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing extremely well. What's on you? Yes, the Death by Garlic and Egg Chicken Split. Yeah, definitely. Death by Garlic. We'll add chicken to it. Anything else for you? Um, and then can I do the five cheese? And five cheese? Yes. And can I add chicken to that? Of course. We're doing a death by garlic with chicken, five cheese with chicken. Anything else? Um, that's good. Love it. Twenty-three dollars. Do you guys have um any NFC go go Ben? Any whatever whatever sort of payment you have on your phone, we can take. Um, order eighty-four. Thank you. Um, we do not have the scan one though. So like, if you're trying to pay with Cash App and you have to like scan a thing, we don't have any sort of QR crap. How are you can doing? I get two, sorry, go oh, ahead. No, no. Good, excellent, sorry. Uh, what can I get you? Can I get two chicken tacos? Two chicken tacos, two chicken tacos. you got it. What big burrito? Uh, 750, if that's everything for you. Slide. Uh, yeah, slide, tap, insert, facing you with the chip, any of it. <laughs> Order 85. Thank you. Can I do the big burrito? But I'm going to be really good with the cheese sauce. Can I get it with that, the chipotle slaw? Yes. Yes, you absolutely can. And without the onion salsa? No salsa.